Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from San Francisco at Fluent Conference. I'm here with Bill McGee from Sauce Labs. Bill, how you doing? Doing well, doing well. So Sauce Labs, what have you guys been up to? I know we've talked in the past, and what's changed with Sauce Labs, let's say, over the last 12 months? Uh, well, we've had a great year. We grew over 150% in 2014, and have really seen enterprise adoption of what we do. And that's basically automating tests so that human beings don't have to do them. Robots are good at doing things. Humans are good at doing exploratory things, but not necessarily repetitive tasks. So we've really proven the concept, I think, at an enterprise level where we've got more and more customers who are saying, I don't want to maintain a test infrastructure. I want to look to you guys to maintain that. And it's borne out in the fact that we've had such a great rate of customer adoption. So is there some hands-on nature that a developer has to have to, to even to automate testing? Because there's got to be some interaction. Yeah, right? and that's actually what's been great about this Fluent conference is that we, we don't see a lot of test engineers coming here, but we have a lot of developers coming up to us. And we say, well, are you responsible for testing? And they say, no, but I have to write my own tests. And more and more of uh, the developers are figuring out that if they want to do a pull request, they want to submit a test with it, they want it to run fast so that they get the feedback right away, and then they can continue to develop. And if you've got multiple teams of developers submitting multiple pull requests, uh, they're all hitting the infrastructure at the same time. So they need something that's scalable and works, and that's what we've been able to provide. And when you say automated, you mean machine automated? Uh, it's basically using a, a protocol that automates behavior in a in a web browser or in a mobile application the way a human being would. So instead of having a tester with a clipboard, you know, type in this data, click on this button, verify that this message or this, this error message is present, uh, that's all done by machine. And then the results, uh, you can see if it breaks, you look at a video or you look at a log, it can feed back into your continuous integration server. And again, the whole idea is to kind of accelerate the process so that the developers can keep on working and not slow down while they wait for a test to run overnight. Do you, do you identify what what uh, breaks or what problems are more critical than others? I mean, is there some sort of like level of not, well, there, there's certainly the, yeah, we don't. This is, again, what the developer, the test engineer will do. Uh, and uh, there's a, a thesis about, you know, lots of small tests here, lots of medium tests in the middle of the pyramid, and then a larger test at the top, which are the ones that really exercise the entire application. But we're really down at kind of at a continuous integration level where okay. we want people to submit multiple tests, multiple times a day, test their little chunk of code, and then uh, move on, or okay. move back if it doesn't work. So your, your t-shirt says test all the things. I, is That's that a right. play on the Internet of Things and you're testing everything? And It's actually, it, it is test all the things. Uh, and it's just that, that, uh, I mean, we've got a couple of uh, uh, local lore about the, uh, you know, th there's always the, uh, oh, do you test? It's like, sure, as soon as we put the application out of the marketplace, we let our, yeah. our, 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 our audience our consumers test it. Test it. Right. Yeah. Uh, or there was a, uh, we heard a story about a, uh, uh, a manager who wanted to begin re uh, doing releases every day because that's what he believed, uh, he had heard Facebook does that. And the test engineer said, okay, well, uh, then we're only going to be able to test on a Friday. And he said, well, why? He says, well, it takes our test suite 26 hours to run. So not only could they not te release every day because they needed a day and two hours to run their test suite, they decided to release on Friday, which is the worst time to release because there's nobody to fix it on, on Saturday weekends. or Sunday. Yeah. So yeah. we believe that by breaking large test suites into small atomic chunks, you can test all the things. Again, test them automatically uh, and just keep that chain going. Um, and that's, you know, again, we, we realize that we're automating testing but we're really in the business of business accel acceleration. And are you, are you testing for any particular audience? I mean, obviously developers, but mm -hmm. language, do those matter? Nope, it's no? uh, whatever language you write in. Uh, Selenium is an open source tool that basically automates browser functionality through the WebDriver protocol. Appium is its mobile counterpart, uh, and again is automating mobile app functionality, hybrid, native, and mobile web. Uh, and you have commands that will do certain things, but you can use your Ruby, your Java, whatever knowledge you have to write a test script and then just inject these commands to make the browser or the application behave in a, in a particular way. So you're here at Fluent, and Fluent is a JavaScript basically conference or a web programming conference as well. Right. Is this audience right for you guys or is this, what, what's the play here? Well, it, it is again because more and more developers are 
if they don't want to, they're being asked to test their own code. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we, we, in fact, uh, uh, have a new uh, fellow who's heading our professional services, Neil Manvar, who came over from Yahoo. He worked on Yahoo Mail for three years. Basically, as they uh, uh, shifted from having a QA, QA, QE environment to one in which uh, management said, no, if you're writing code, you're going to write a test. And if you submit your code without that test, management's going to come, in this case, Marissa Myers, and ask you why. Uh, and uh, so it, it's a, it really is a cultural shift. And, and, and we're kind of looking at this the way lean manufacturing was to automotive and other manufacturing processes in the uh, 80s and 90s, mm -hmm. is what continuous integration, continuous uh, development, and the role that automated testing plays in all of that. And developers are getting ahead of that curve because they have to or they're being asked to. It's almost like building maintainable code because if you tested it, you delivered your test with it. Right. It's right. going to be maintainable because it's running. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And there, there are all sorts of uh, best practices for writing tests that aren't brittle, that aren't going to break. Uh, and again, all of this, is, it's, it's open source, and that's what's really nice about it. Both Selenium and Appium are open source, so it's got the community around it, and we just provide this infrastructure. You don't have to use Sauce Labs if you're uh, running Selenium or Appium, but you just may not want to deal with the infrastructure. So what's on the horizon for Sauce Labs? Are you guys thinking any themes or any, any issues that are coming up for you guys that you'd like to address down the road? Uh, mobile is eating the world more than software. Yeah. It, and, and, and actually, there are two parts IoT to that. IoT is, too. It's, yes, it's that's true, and, and it, that's yeah. interesting because uh, our co-founder, Jason Huggins, uh, who spoke at Solid last year, um, has this thesis that what are you going to do, how are you going to test when you don't have a mouse or a keyboard Dead to screens. interact with? Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's very interesting, but right now, uh, mobile is still enough of a wild west that we're out there trying to figure out uh, or, or help people understand that the same practices that work in web app development, continuous integration has been around for years, uh, that it can also work in the mobile app development. So why is mobile still a wild west when we have really two main platforms or two and a half main well, platforms? Well, there's that, but there's the prolifer proliferation of apps, the proliferation of devices, and there's really no, uh, there, there isn't a, a one build chain that works, I think, or that people have identified as that's the optimal way to go. But as with web testing, we believe that, you know, the more testing you do early on, the better off you're going to be, do going to be downstream. So this whole promise of HTML5 being the, the new one platform for everything right. really right. hasn't happened? I, 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 I can't speak to that, but yeah. uh, I do know that uh, you know, we want to be kind of uh, uh, you know, the Swiss Army. Yeah, agnostic. Uh, whether, or, or, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, platform agnostic and, and uh, uh, device agnostic. Yeah. So themes, the mobile is eating the world. Mobile is eating the world more than ever. And I think too, I mean, the fact is the majority of testing is still manual. And, or it's being done in a waterfall environment. And as companies realize that their business isn't just you know, providing tires anymore, it's providing an app that lets you decide what tires you need. And, and, and the business is being driven by applications or websites and that they need to test them, they need to bring them out more quickly, they need to bring them out with high quality, uh, because if they don't, they're losing a competitive, uh, or they're at a competitive disadvantage. Yeah, I really like the notion of you write the code, you write the test for the code as well. Right. Right. And deliver them both. Right. Bill, we look forward to speaking with you again right. in future ones. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.